I would like to recognize some special guests who are with us tonight. Mr. Steve Monier is here representing Senator Ayotte. And Mr. Matt Leahy represents Senator Sheehan. And both senators have sent us letters recognizing our efforts and we appreciate that. Welcome to State Senators Peggy Gilmore and Betty Lasky. <laughs> State Representative Sylvia Gale and Latha Manjapudi. <laughs> Executive Counselor Deb Pignatali has joined us. And thanks to several older persons and other local officials, officials who have come here, and Governor Hassan will be arriving shortly. <clears throat> Give it up for the gov. Huh? <laughs> Our speakers this evening will be giving you various perspectives on the problem of homelessness in our community and how this fund and your support of it we'll go about addressing this issue. But before we begin, I'm going to ask Pastor Jeff DeFranca from Community Chapel to gather us together for an invocation. Pastor Jeff. As a board member, I just wanna say what a great turnout tonight. We applaud you tonight, thank you very much. Let's pray together. Lord God, tonight we gather in this very warm place and we truly have our hearts strangely warmed by the reason for our gathering. Thank you, God, for the gift of people who desire to make a difference in our world for those, for whatever reason, are not in this warm place, but rather often they are faced with living outdoors on this cold night or in a car or on someone's couch. Thank you for places like Harbor Homes and its partners and the Partnership for Successful Living, for being on the front lines in this effort and for all those who've been spearheading this fund. How appropriate for us to turn to you on this night, this point of count night, where the lives of those seeking survival in the elements are tabulated and recorded. Lord, for you it is a point of count night every night, because these we gather for, these homeless among us, count very much to you. They are made in your image and are sacred in their value. So Lord, help us this night to join together to make an impact in these sacred lives, to determine this night that we will continue to seek to make the needed difference. Grant to us hearts like yours, generous hearts. And we believe, Lord, that this would please you and honor you, and may it bless those who are not here with us, but are the point of count that we wish someday to eliminate. We pray this. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. It's my distinct pleasure to begin our program this evening by introducing Peter Kelleher, CEO of Harbor Homes and the Partnership for Successful Living. Peter has led Harbor Homes for some 31 years building it into the largest organization in the state, working on the needs of homeless individuals and families. Peter is the past chair of Governor Lynch's Interagency Council on the Homeless and the Greater Nashua Continuum of Care. He has earned a reputation for leading and completing efforts to end homelessness. Peter has assembled an extraordinary team of talented, and dedicated individuals, and we on the committee are proud to partner with him in his efforts to end homelessness in the greater Nashua community. Peter. Good evening. Thank you so much, Jerry, for uh, the very kind uh, introduction. On behalf of our staff and volunteers, I want to thank all of you for coming tonight on such a cold night. 
just think about how heartening it is. What an amazing community we have where people who from every kind of corner, the business community, the Chamber of Commerce, banks, hospitals, homeless persons that might have been served, and, uh, and just really uh, the business community at Lara. It's just amazing to see how many people have come forth for this effort. And we're just very, very grateful. The Partnership for Successful Living is privileged to be the link between those who want to help and those who need our help. Since 1996, I've been participating in a staggering, and I mean staggering, number of meetings with community leaders and state and local agencies to discuss the impact of homelessness on our region. Uh, and this meeting tonight is by far the most exciting. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about who we are. The New Hampshire Partnership for Successful Living is a unique integrated network of programs and services that help vulnerable New Hampshire families, individuals, and children challenged by poverty, mental illness, health care, employment, and homelessness. You may know us as Harbor Homes, Keystone Hall, Healthy at Home, the Southern New Hampshire HIV AIDS Task Force, Milford Regional Counseling Services, or Welcoming Light, Inc. The partnership is the largest provider of permanent supportive housing in the state of New Hampshire. The term permanent supportive housing means that we don't just put a roof over somebody's head, we find our clients safe and affordable housing, permanent housing, and provide them with the support and skill so that, most importantly, they stay housed. We believe in the power of the housing first model. It kind of means uh, first get somebody housed and then figure out how to solve all of the other challenges at a point later. After more than 30 years of doing this work, we know a safe home is necessary in order for someone to recover from substance abuse, cope with mental illness, maintain employment, or be an effective parent. And that is why we are here tonight. Tonight we are not here to talk about the one and a half million homeless persons in the United States. We're not here to talk about the 2,500 homeless persons in the state of New Hampshire, nor are we here to talk about the 306 homeless persons in the greater Nashua area. We're here to talk about 28 individuals, families, and children who are chronically homeless, and our goal is to get them housed this year. What does it mean to be chronically homeless? According to HUD, chronically homeless is an unaccompanied homeless individual or a family with a disabling condition who has been continuously homeless for a year or more or four times in a three-year period. The 28 chronically homeless represent about 10 percent of the current homeless population in Greater Nashua. So why do we want to focus on such a small group? The answer is simple. We're prioritizing where we will have the most impact in the community. The chronically homeless have some of the most complex and challenging needs, making them difficult to place. They require the highest level of public sector resources. In fact, by focusing on their needs, we project that we will save the public sector this year $1.2 million. This will free up valuable resources for those who are episodically homeless. The, the resources that chronically homeless persons use often involve admissions to the emergency department or use of the emergency department at a very high rate. Harbor Homes knows firsthand about this in that we provide the behavioral health assessments now in both of the hospitals here in Nashua. We know how many homeless people arrive at the emergency departments and how frequently that occurs. This is also about helping with all of us as we try to access emergency departments or other health care. It's, it's a cost savings for you and I and the community as a whole as we uh, try to keep uh, health care dollars being used where they are most needed. Most importantly, their lives are at risk. They have life-threatening medical needs and their mortality rate is two to three times higher than the general population. We see this as a moral issue as much as an economic issue. 
we aren't alone in our analysis. The New England Journal of Medicine, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, did a, an article on how New York State is restructuring its Medicaid program. And it found that the, the chronically homeless are the highest users of costly hospital-based acute care. They concluded that placing people who are homeless in supported housing can lead to improved health, reduced hospital use, decreased health care cost, especially when frequent users of health services are targeted. The journal also reported that studies show that among the most high-risk patients, like the chronically homeless, that there is actually a net positive return on investment. Over the past few years, the partnership and collaboration with federal, state, and local agencies has had great success in reducing homelessness, in particular among veterans and those with HIV AIDS. Now in 2014, we want to focus on individuals and families who are chronically homeless. Just to give you a sense of the history, in 2003, yeah, I was here then. <laughs> there were 836 homeless in the greater Nashua area. Today, there are 306. This is all homeless. In a large part because of the work that takes place within our agencies. Not only do these families have a place to call home, they have also used services provided by our health clinic, our mental health clinic, our substance abuse residential facility, the HIV AIDS Task Force, and our home care organization. Plus, our case managers have matched our clients with other services available in the community. In fact, the people in Greater Nashua who are now or have been homeless consider the partnership as their family. We are accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They turn to us when times are tough. As many of you may know, our organizations have about seven facilities that are 724 that are kind of spread across the city, if you've ever gone on a tour of our different facilities. And while I'm thinking of it, I really want to encourage anybody to please uh, consider coming on a tour. We have some scheduled, and there's sign-ups for ones elsewhere in the building, but uh, it's nothing like seeing. So they turn to us when times are tough. They turn to us when they want to celebrate. They share Thanksgiving dinner with us, participate in recreational activities, and reach out to us on a day-to-day -day basis. I suspect that a large number of the people in this room know what I'm talking about when, they, when I say they share Thanksgiving with us. We have seen that safe, affordable housing, coupled with individually designed supportive services like these, is what it takes to give someone a chance to get back on their feet. We are proud that the average period of time that a client lives in our housing is six years. We see this as evidence that our sustained and profound impact on this vulnerable population is considerable. But we also have many clients who stay connected with us for even more years than that. In fact, a client who started serving, uh, we started serving in 1986 recently said, had it not been for Harbor Homes, I would have died on the streets, both from the elements or alcoholism or both. The partnership has created a proven, cost-effective strategy for ending homelessness, especially for those who are chronically homeless. But it doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't end when someone is sheltered. Our work does result in people being safe, cared for, and given a chance to turn their life around and become productive members of our community. So how can you help us end chronic homelessness in Greater Nashua? We receive some funding from HUD to provide housing and services to all impacted by homelessness. But the HUD funding requires us to raise $237,000 this year from individuals and companies in the community. This is an ongoing effort, and with your support, we have an opportunity to help homeless reclaim life as part of a productive member of our community. We are very thankful and awestruck, absolutely awestruck, by the leadership and financial support provided by Bob and Kil Hillary Keating, Jerry Ross, David and Peggy Gilmore, and the members of the Nashua Unitarian Universalist Church, as well as the Partnership Board of Directors and many others who have helped stepped up 
to help us focus our efforts uh, for those with the greatest need. These efforts have already resulted in raising more than $45,000. Thank you for your confidence. With the help of these pace setters, and most importantly with your help, we have a real chance of not just ending homelessness, but making sure that everyone has a home and a support to live in it. And now I'd like to introduce our honorary chairperson, also an awesome gentleman, a retired cardiologist and physician in our community, David Gilmore. Thank you. I've got some notes here, but I think I'm going to change my talk a little bit. I'm going to start with these. Peter mentioned the tour. I'm going to encourage you to take the tour. So what's a tour? You come out to the front, you get in the van, and off you go. <laughs> you see a few of the 36 facilities that this organization runs. You see the people who run them. You won't see many of the residents, but you will see the people who run them. And you will see a society, a world within our world that you've been driving by all of your lives here in Nashua and never knew they existed. And I'm going to pass these around. There's going to be a tour on February the 6th. There's going to be a tour on March the 13th. And if you don't have your little <coughs> daytimer with you. That's old-fashioned, isn't it? <laughs> uh, there's a, the third page is, I'd like to take a tour, but I don't know when, but here's my number. Give me a call. What are the tour dates? They, they all, when you get the card, you can sign up on the date, February the 6th and March the 13th. Now I'm going to begin. I am the honorary chair. Now, I didn't have any idea what an honorary chair does. <laughs> So I uh, asked a friend who knows, and he said, oh, he said, wear a tie, comb your hair, and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> so, <coughs> but I can't keep my mouth shut. So here we go. Uh, I, Peter had a beautiful talk with an enormous amount of information in it. I'm not going to try to repeat it. But I am going to tell you how to know more about this organization. Governor, welcome. Thank you. Mr. Governor Hatch. <laughs> so if you want to know a little bit more about this organization, if you'll look through the windows behind you, you'll see some pictures, a lot of pictures. Now, you came in this door, most of you. If you'll go out the door by the fr refrigerators and take a right, you will be on what's called the wall. Pictures everywhere. And they're organized. One second, I think this should. They're organized. If you look over the top, it says homes plus support equals success. Under homes, there are 29 pictures, but there are up to 36 facilities that they operate here. And the little caption below will tell you a little bit about what it's for. Services. All the services it takes to get up off your knees and back into life. A GED. Medical care. Mental health care. Jobs. Low-income housing. And on and on. Lots of services. And successes. I have success. I brought one of the pictures on the wall, and I'd like to pass these around. I would ask you to focus on the green line, the green line at the bottom, which is the number of chronically homeless, the group we're talking about, the group that's the most difficult to help. And, and there's 10 years of data here. In 2004, the number was about 300 chronically homeless. That curve is almost to zero. 28 short of zero. That is our goal. <laughs> well,
When I shut up, uh, Bob Keating is going to tell us about this fund. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, ask with you to think with me about the hard questions, okay? Tough questions. One, can we really get to zero in trying to give homes to the homeless? Well, this institution that we're sitting in has had the HIV AIDS homeless zero for the last five years. There were nearly 300 vets homeless. Last year, there was one. And this year, when the count is completed, that you've heard about, we're hoping that one is housed. So the answer is, we don't need to have a society with homeless. We don't need to give a legacy to our children that homelessness is just part of the deal. Right. Next question. Does Harbor Homes have the leadership to pull this off? Well, you take the tour and you meet the people that run these facilities. This was my, most, uh, my largest impression, dedicated to the people they serve. And they all seem to want to work for Peter. <laughs> Actually, that's not quite right. They all seem to want to work with Peter. If you walk around these halls for a while, you'll hear, I'm going to meet with Peter. Peter's going to help us with this. Peter knows the answer. I thought there were 12 Peters working here. <laughs> and then I noticed something else. I never heard his last name. <laughs> Peter, do you have a last name? <laughs> Fortune 500s would be very wise to come look at the leadership model in this institution. <laughs> Peter hit on this, but I'm going to hit it again. Does, doesn't the government provide money for the homeless? The answer is yes, but not enough. But they do provide a match, a real match. For every dollar we give, they give three. That's a match. I think they do it to get communities involved with their issues. We are involved. Next question. <laughs> if Nashua pulls this off and has no chronically homeless, Will it have a ripple effect for the rest of the state? The answer, there already is a ripple effect. Claremont asked Peter to come and build them a home, a home for the homeless vets. It's been in, in operation three years. Manchester asked Peter to come build them one. The ribbon was cut last year. Other cities that I know of have asked Peter to come and do it for them. Many cities, many towns have come to our city and asked Peter to tell them how to do it. The ripple is well underway, and if we complete this goal, the ripple will become a wave. <laughs> Next question, almost to the end. Um, if we do succeed, no more homeless, chronically homeless, that's the category. What next? Well, when the fires are all put out, we don't dismantle the fire department. There's lots more work to do. There are services that are needed to keep people from becoming homeless. We have permanently housed people that need services. And we haven't even talked about prevention. What in our society needs to change to prevent homelessness? How, my last question, how can we help? Well, yes, they need our dollars, but heck, they, they'll take pledges too. I will give money for the next three years, but they need more than that. They need us to come back here next year and say, what have you done with our dollars? Where are you? What are your needs? How can we help some more? And finally, they need us to be ambassadors in our daily walk talks in life with friends, dare to bring up the homelessness. 
And in Nashua, you can dare to say, we are getting there. This is a kickoff, but it's already well underway, and we're pushing to success. Now, I'm about to quit, but I'd like to tell a story as I quit. A story about a lady that I will call Nancy. This is a true story. This is a short story. It's also a verbatim story. I've only changed one word, her name. Two weeks ago, tomorrow, I was sitting in the senior center up Tyler Street doing my paperwork for Meals on Wheels because that's a point which they disperse the meals. And sitting at the table up down from me was Nancy. I've seen her sitting there waiting for lunch, same seat, same table for the last three years. Nancy has a raspy voice, an assertive voice, piercing eyes. And between that raspy voice and that piercing eyes, she has a wisp of a smile. So I was working away. David, it's a small place. David, what do you do? Well, Nancy, I'm a retired doc. Silence. So what are you doing now? Well, uh, I am involved with a program trying to end homelessness in Nashua, Nancy. Kind of a fundraiser, I guess. Silence. Well, every month I get my check, $960. Right off, I send $900 for my rent. And that leaves me $60 for the rest. But I do play polka. I mean bingo, not polka. I do play bingo. Sometimes I win. Sorry, Nancy, yeah, I missed a word there. Sometimes I win. Next time I win, I'm going to give you $5. Will that help? Yes, Nancy, that'll help a lot. She reared back in a chair, clapped her hands, and said, great. That's my story. <laughs> Next is, um, P, uh, what is your name, Bob? <laughs> is Bob Keating, and I, I, Hillary is here. Bob and Hillary have been working on this homeless issue for decades. It was their idea, and they are pushing this fund for which we're all here. And Bob is going to give you some specifics. Hello. Uh, I could spend this uh, whole time thanking uh, um, everyone, and, and uh, so I'll do some of that, but uh, please be assured that I could go for a long time in, in thanking. Uh, David, uh, um, start off with you just in terms of the energy that you brought, you know, most immediately to it. Uh, your dedication. He brought 17 of his friends on the tour. And please remember, he gets no money for these tours. <laughs> and there also is a good accommodations if you like to, and that's, that is an extra. But uh, in all seriousness, uh, that your, your presence for uh, um, the Honorary Chairman, well, we're very honored of what you've done. And, uh, you know, clearly for those who know him in the community as a physician, um, that he has cared for, uh, for our community in, 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 a, in a very incredible way. Uh, and he delivers meals. All right, so, so if, you, if you haven't had enough food by the end of uh, tonight, uh, just see David and he will arrange it. It will come in a plastic uh, container and it will be warm. <laughs> And good, and good. So, uh, 10 years uh, volunteer uh, with that. So, so in my continuation of, of the thank yous, it's you know to all of you and all of the people in our community that have uh, continually uh, given uh, to the most vulnerable uh, uh, of us. Um, and by giving to the most vulnerable, we're giving to uh, each and every one of us. So I thank them. I could spend a long time thanking the volunteers within Harbor Homes for, uh, for doing that and, and the people behind the scenes, there's 350 people providing services to the uh, um, 700 who are living in housing, the 3,000 uh, that were served last year, and the many more. If you have time, um, 
and you could look and see the construction because major, major development is here in terms of uh, medical services. And for the first time, there's going to be medical respite beds here uh, for the most vulnerable who would go home and oftentimes recycle back into the emergency room. And it's the right thing to do, obviously. It's economically um, the right thing to, you know, to do. Uh, I thank the board of uh, Harbor Homes who immediately uh, embraced this idea and a special note out to uh, uh, Vince Chamberlain and uh, um, Lynn King uh, for, their, for their efforts in welcoming us and serving as a license to uh, the Ending uh, Homeless Fund. Um, and Finally, I have to say thank you to the, uh, you know, to the committee, uh, Jerry Roche, who just graciously jumped right in and uh, uh, and gave and coordinated this, uh, you know, this event. Sarah, if you haven't got your bracelet on, how many people have your bracelet on? Uh, okay, well, you know, I don't, this is a no pressure situation, but I hope that you can, you know, put it out because Sarah would do designed this and uh, made this uh, happen to bring awareness to, to what we did. And your bags, when we leave, there will be bags for you. Uh, we wish to have, uh, to have more of them. Uh, to uh, Elaine Thomas, uh, who helped a lot with the staff at uh, Harbor Homes in terms of uh, the, the food. Uh, she was delivering food here. The end in, in the end in, uh, point in time count, which uh, is still going on at this point in time, um, facility was opened in a different way to provide services to people. And she was delivering uh, all, all kinds of food here last night at 9 o'clock. Uh, so we thank her and for her work on the committee. Uh, for, for Ellen uh, uh, Barr, uh, for she, we call her the webmaster, because <laughs> uh, she's the one that's coordinated the information going out on Harbor Homes' uh, you know, uh, website. So uh, a, a very, very critical person. And the co-chair person and really the bedrock of uh, uh, our family um, and for this committee, uh, my wife, Hillary Keating. So besides saying thank you, I can almost say you've heard the people already, and I'm really just the setup person for, uh, for our final speaker in a, in a few minutes, uh, Matt, uh, who I heard uh, speak uh, at Independence Hall uh, in Manchester, modeled after Delaney House right behind us in Buckingham Place. But before I do that, as, as David has said, that I'm to speak about the fund. Um, well, the fund, essentially I want to speak about the, the why of it, the what uh, of it, the who is it for, uh, and where are we in, in the journey uh, about the fund. The Ending Homeless Fund was a, and is a goal in our Ending Homeless Plan, which was written and uh, adopted 10 years ago this June. And in it, it said a fund needed to be created, uh, and the fund itself would provide the kinds of flexibility which is not often present with a, a variety of grants that you receive. So it, it had the flexibility and nimbleness uh, to be able to do that. And so we worked in a variety of ways to um, try to get that fund uh, established. Only a group from the Unitarian Universalist Church, their ending uh, hunger and homeless project said, let's move on it. And the natural partner to turn to was, uh, his name is Kelleher, that's the last name. So, <laughs> so we met Peter Kelleher, but most people just know him as Peter and he's, he's walks around with another idea. Oh, how about this? <laughs> no, about this. And, and I'll, you know, if time permits, I could tell you many of those stories. In fact, even one yesterday, where I was going, Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all of that. So it started, um, you know, by by going to Harbor Homes in this way. It was a natural affiliation for our church in that uh, our uh, retired uh, minister emeritus uh, uh, Don Raleigh was instrumental in the establishment of Harbor Homes, and one of our church members, who is right over here, uh, Betty Winberg, is still on the board of Harbor Homes and Partnerships for Successful Living. So let's hear it for Betty. So thank you, Betty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> You're done. I have a few comments. Okay. All right. 
All right, she does. And she also sends thank you cards. Uh, Hillary and I have uh, actually wallpapered a part of our wall from the thank you cards that she has done. So thank you for that. So that's the, that's the why of it. There's a need to be flexible uh, to create the funds uh, to generate uh, uh, more housing. And that leads me into the second of what it is going to do. Well, Peter has said that, David has said it. Uh, what we are going to do is to use that money to complete our goal in this community, first off, to end the chronic homelessness uh, for the most vulnerable in our community. That's in essence what it, uh, what it is, and we'll do that by, in some cases, well, uh, and actually within a month in all likely, I think I'm, I'm speaking uh, correctly here, within a month we'll have two more homes. Uh, and the first act of the money coming from this fund will go to match that up and so the money will immediately have the benefit of two more people will not be homeless in our community. <laughs> Secondly, what it's going to do is, um, <clears throat> as it's been mentioned in terms of match, that what it will do is it will allow for uh, us to ensure that people are in our uh, housing units will be able to stay there we'll have the match for people in existing housing so that's what it will do uh, so immediate benefits and this is how it goes forward so next year there'll be home for more funds we don't know what the federal match will be uh, next year if there's a takeaway from what I'd say for a simple uh, metric that you can hold on to, uh, and I owe this to, well, I can't see Miles, but Miles is the man, right there he is. Hello, Miles. <laughs> Miles Pendry is the IT man here for Harbor Homes, and 10 years ago when we were developing the plan, uh, Miles, in the midst of us, you know, I'm not a very high-tech person, and people who know me, I, have, I still have passenger pigeons that I, you know, I communicate, to, you know, by, that's my particular way. Uh, but as we're putting up there and looking at, you know, on the wide screen, that w our, our plan and writing it, he looks and he goes, uh-huh, homelessness bad, housing good. Can you describe that? Homelessness bad, housing good. One more time. Homelessness bad, housing good. That is really the essence of this. There is no you know, major uh, you know, high technology or, geez, how can we do? And that's what this plan is, uh, is about. So there, what have you. So that's the why, uh, that's the what, and the who. Well, that's already been identified. The most vulnerable in our community. And by doing that, we know that that will benefit them in all kinds of ways. All of us know that. We really don't even need to see the research articles that say, yeah, being out on the street doesn't help your mental health. It doesn't help your physical health, right? So we know that. But what we also know that not only in that giving to them, uh, the least of ours, and you know, I thank you, Reverend Jeff, for, uh, Pastor Jeff, for, for your remarks and uh, uh, all that, that in fact, uh, what we know in our hearts is in fact that when we take care of our brothers and sisters, we are all benefit from that. And the dialogue in our country is increasingly moving in that. Inequality does not just hurt the people at the bottom, they hurt all of us. That is true. Um, so in our dialogue, and in the religious community, um, Pope Francis is taking that stance uh, over there. So that's what we're doing. So where are we? You heard it. We're that close to ending chronic homelessness in our community. And for those who know me and have heard me, you know, you, you probably couldn't be surprised that I might come a little on the, you know, zealot sometime around these issues. Um, but Peter yesterday said to me, no, we can, uh, we can end chronic homelessness this year if we raise that $200,000 plus. So that's, that's where we are, that's where we are uh, on it. So finally, I want to leave with you the last line uh, of a writing that has been very, very important to me uh, for many years. I, uh, I recite it in my head uh, various times. So if you see me mumbling, I might be thinking that uh, on that. 
Uh, I used it uh, uh, at um, in the eulogy at my father's funeral. And it is, uh, all our lives we are in need, and others are in need of us. That is the matrix. We are a community, and in caring, we grow stronger, and we help our individual uh, well-being. So thank you for, for coming. Thank you for your support um, and being there as part of our community. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Matt Milhorn, uh, that I was very touched by your, uh, by your remarks and, and uh, deeply appreciative of your journey. So, thank you. Well, this will get interesting. Get to speak before the governor, no pressure. None whatsoever. Peter says, come on down and we need to speak at something. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here before you to let you know one thing and one thing only. What we do here works. It says in that program guide, I'm a Harbor Homes employee here to speak to you about overcoming homelessness. Three years ago, I joined a percentage of demographic of homeless veterans here in the state of New Hampshire. If you'd asked me who Harbor Homes was, I would have said, those are guys that build condos, right? When you Googled what to do as a homeless veteran, you got one answer and one answer only, and it was a far off place and it wasn't exactly what we needed. But through communication and a great network that I developed in my journey, I found out exactly what Harbor Homes is. Because homelessness is a serious problem. And folks, we need serious people to solve it. What we do here is an absolute amazing thing. And I'm here to tell you, without what Harbor Homes does, I would not be standing here. I was left homeless, broken, poor health, about as bad off as one person could get. And I'm often asked to come to groups and speak on behalf of my journey. And the major thing that I can tell you is, you can't do this alone. Absolutely not cannot do this alone. You're asked to believe in a higher power. I ask mine every day, to thank God that Harbor Homes is here. And how do you pay it forward? How do you return such a gift? Well, I got that gift. I had a chance to come back and be an employee and be part of the sword point of what I consider the flagship of ending one of the most horrific problems that we have in our society today. And it's chronic homelessness. And right there along, when you open the paper, you see homeless veterans right alongside it. And to know that only one of my brothers is out there that needs to get help this year is an amazing thing. What else would I say? I've always never been one loss of words. So I want to thank a couple of people. I know she's probably hiding. I'd like to thank Michelle Cool, who was the absolute inspiration for what I do now. She was the first smiling face I met when I got here, and now I'm proud to call her my boss. There's so many more, it would take more than this to thank them. We coined a phrase that I use in my office that I help my troopers every day. Success is measured by doing something than to fail by doing nothing. That's it in its simplest form, ladies and gentlemen. It's not big fancy words, 10 page report, something you're gonna see on CNN. But I will leave you with this. I spent some time trying to research what I would say for you tonight. And every, every newspaper article I read on chronic homelessness in this area had two things in common. One of them was that they were chronically homeless and two, they received help from Harbor Homes. We make a difference here. So thank you very much. I think Betty wants to say something. Thank you. You're probably going to need the PA. I can't let this occasion go by without adding a couple of words. 
I'm a co-founder of Harbor Homes. I've co-founded a number of things, but there's nothing that I'm prouder of than what has happened with Harbor Homes and with Peter and the staff that we've been able to attract and keep. I never leave a Harbor Homes facility, but, I, but what I feel better when I leave than when I went in. How we find these people and keep them, I don't know. Even at times when we had to cut back and take furloughs, our staff didn't want to take the furlough. They stayed. It's incredible. And along those lines, back when we first got started, two people, social workers with the community council and myself, got together and decided we had to have something. And they were the spearheads, knew where to go, who to talk to, to get this started. And we borrowed $300. And on that, we hired Peter. <laughs> had no idea how we were going to pay it back. We, we had two of the social workers from the community council that knew where to go and who to look for. And they found him in the shrub, shrubs of Massachusetts. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> and as it happens, I have a son who now is, doesn't seem possible, he just turned 61. He's been uh, involved with Harbor Homes, been a, a client of Harbor Homes for as many years as we've existed. And but for him, I don't know where he would be, never mind where I would be. Harbor Homes saved his life and, sa saved and has enhanced mine. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you is, says so little when so much needs to be said. I can't tell you how appreciative I am and all the other people I know who have families that have been involved in Harbor Homes. It's just it's amazing, amazing. And weren't we lucky to find Peter? <laughs> Believe that. When, when we were, funds were short and we had to furlough people, our people wouldn't, wouldn't go. We couldn't pay them, but they stayed. It's an absolutely an incredible place. And I'm just so proud to be associated with it and to still have a son that lives in the he lives in a, one of the Harbor Homes group homes. Thank you, means so little. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. thank you, Betty, and thank you, Matt, for sharing your personal story as well and to uh, what others have said. Before I uh, introduce the governor, I want to call attention to a report that was released in the media today. This is a report from the New Hampshire Mental Health Sentinel Event Review, which was produced by a study group, a commission that the governor appointed. There's a lot of information in here. I'm not going to read it all, but I am going to quote a single line. Among the conclusions were that supported stable housing that is affordable, group home options, and sustainable employment can all lead to improved stability in a patient's day-to-day -day existence with increasing self-sufficiency, adherence to treatment, and overall improvement in mental and physical health. Supported stable housing. I want to thank the uh, the governor for her foresight in appointing this commission and for the many ways in which she has demonstrated her care and commitment for all of our citizens here in this state and especially for our most vulnerable. It's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Maggie Hassan, Governor of New Hampshire. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry, for the introduction. Um, thank you all. Please be seated. Um, 
Betty, I know what you mean. I have had the privilege of helping to serve Thanksgiving dinner here now twice, once as governor-elect and now as governor. And you do, in fact, always leave this place feeling better than when you came in. So thank you for reminding us of that. Thank you for speaking. Um, it's a remarkable night. Um, Jerry, thank you for the introduction. Peter Kelleher and Harbor Holmes, thank you for what you do every single day. To my friend, Dr. Gilmore, um, thank you for being such a great example of community spirit and caring. To Bob Keating and everyone who came together to create the Ending Homeless Fund, thank you so much. To Matt Melbourne for sharing your story and then for not only pulling yourself up, but then helping others to follow your example. Thank you so much for your work and for being willing to share it with us. There are some other great advocates and public servants here tonight, too. I see my friend, Councillor Pignatelli here, who serves the city of Nashua and other cities and towns on the Executive Council so well. I believe Senators Gilmore and Lasky are both here. Am I right? I didn't, yes, there's Senator Lasky. Where's Senator Gilmore? Right there, hello. Um, Representative Gale and Representative Manjaputi are here, and I believe you also have some members of the Board of Aldermen here as well. I'm very, very grateful to all of the public servants who really make New Hampshire work and represent the people. And in this particular capacity, they have all been terrific advocates and partners, as all of you are, in the fight to end homelessness. Um, I want to touch on just a couple of things. Um, you've all referenced it tonight, but ending homelessness is really part of our core mission as a state and as a democracy. All Granite Staters deserve the opportunity to live healthy and productive lives. It's critical that we make sure that our most vulnerable populations can live independently and then have the opportunity to do what every person needs to do to have a dignified existence, the opportunity to contribute to our economic life, the opportunity to contribute and lead in our civic life. Those, that that kind of engagement not only helps each and every one of us, but it spurs economic development. It helps us grow a strong middle class, and that's the engine of our country and it's the core of our success. I'm happy that as part of the bipartisan budget that we put together last spring, we ma managed to find more than $7 million to support homeless shelters in our state. I recently was able to touch base with a interdisciplinary group, if you will, of advocates and um, members of the New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority, housing counselors, uh, lawyers, member of legal assistance, members of our Attorney General's office, to relaunch Home Help New Hampshire, which has helped prevent homelessness by helping at-risk homeowners throughout the state of New Hampshire. And there was a wonderful woman who owns a business here in Nashua, I am forgetting her name and the name of her bakery, who faced foreclosure proceedings until Home Help New Hampshire stepped in. They've helped over 800 homeowners either avoid foreclosure in the last year or uh, find a better, more financially uh, stable sit housing situation uh, without having to go through homelessness uh, in, in between. So I'm proud of that effort and it's something that uh, we'll continue to work on so that we can continue to fight homelessness that can occur uh, from a sudden economic downturn or unemployment for so many of our citizens. Um, and Jerry referenced um, the mental health issue, something that Again, I'm very proud that members of both political parties in both chambers came together to work on in our budget. We found a way to invest $24 million in this biennium back into our community-based mental health system because we understand um, 
because we understand the importance of community-based care in preventing um, acute mental health crises um, and all of the subsequent ill effects that can come with that. Um, in addition to finding the money to invest back in our community-based mental health care in our budget, we also did something else that will take um, continued work and support um, on behalf of the people of New Hampshire and particularly uh, to help people who have mental illness. But we entered into a settlement in a lawsuit that had been brought against the state by the United States government and by uh, a whole group of people who have mental illness who really uh, challenged us as a state to make sure that people who have mental illness are able to get the kind of care they need in the most appropriate setting. And the basic um, claim of the lawsuit was that in New Hampshire, we had so uh, underfunded our community health system uh, that really the only available treatment for many of our friends and neighbors when they got into an acute episode was to be hospitalized in a very restricted setting at New Hampshire Hospital and we didn't have enough of those beds as well. Uh, we settled that lawsuit and as part of that settlement, um, a settlement that will allow us to make sure that we're building the right kind of community-based care for our folks with mental illness uh, in a New Hampshire way. Um, and by the way, in a way that we can decide what to do and a federal judge won't tell us what to do. Um, it, one of the things that it requires us to do and we have agreed to do is find more ways to provide supported housing and crisis housing for people with mental health challenges. So I'm very proud of that. It also provides for supported employment. It also provides uh, for additional community-based services, for more 24-hour response teams for people who are having a mental health challenge. At the end of the day, that uh, settlement, along with the things that we need to continue to do it as a state, speaks to the fact that um, is one I don't really need to preach to all of you about. Uh, we are all citizens of the Granite State. And at the end of the day, it is our friends and neighbors who may happen to have mental health issues who need to know that they will receive medical care for an illness that they have just the way anybody else having any other illness would, would be treated. And so I'm, I'm really pleased with that work. Um, you know, we, we want all Granite Staters to have the opportunity to work hard and have a family and contribute to their communities. And that's why the work that you're doing is so important. It's a, this um, Ending Homelessness Fund is a critical initiative for housing the chronically homeless. It is the first of its kind in New Hampshire to focus on private funds to end homelessness. Um, it's an example of what I like to call our collective problem-solving spirit, our all-hands-on-deck ethos. We look at a problem and we address it together and we f draw from all different communities, stakeholders, resources to get the job done. Um, if you want to know whether this has had a ripple effect across the state, you bet it has. Not only in some of the towns that you've already talked about that have built their own programs, but it has given your leaders confidence as well that we have the capacity to do this. It's one of the reasons I'm quite confident that we're going to be able to provide the kind of supported housing that we need to do for those who are challenged with mental illness. It's an example of what I think we all know, and each of you who has spoken tonight has said it. When we care for each other, we all get stronger. It's as simple as that. Um, and it is, in fact, as simple as what our forebearers understood about democracy. Because generation to generation, Every time we bring people in from the margins of our society and fully include them, our democracy and our economy grow stronger. Uh, for my husband Tom and me, that lesson was learned as we have been able to raise a young man who has cerebral palsy in our community rather than have him in an institution. Uh, for all of you here tonight, it's about understanding that as we bring people in from the margins into housing, into a home, that we're all going to be better and stronger for it. 
um, at the end of the day, this is about what our, our forebearers knew, which is that in a democracy, everyone counts. Um, I have to tell you, this has been a great way for me to um, conclude a day. Um, you are all turning out after busy days yourself. You are a great example of what makes this state the remarkable place it is. Because as busy as you all are, as much as you all have to do, um, and I bet some of you still have to help kids with homework, uh, do your own homework, uh, maybe get the laundry done and uh, pick up the house a little bit and get ready for your next day, uh, whether it's at a paying job or as a volunteer. You're here tonight because you're committed to each other and committed to making our state stronger. Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor Hassan, for those inspiring remarks. Thank you all for being here this evening. Thank you for listening to why we think the fund is important and the work of Harbor Homes is important. Thank you for supporting this effort. So what is this? It's a bag. This is an ending homelessness kit. And inside this little kit, are little packages that you can take to help spread the word. Hopefully you've all left with a wristband that says, How Long Without a Home? The Harbor Homes Ending Homelessness Fund. And in, with this band is a little information. You can take this and you can give it to your neighbor. You can give it to your brother or sister. You can give it to a friend and you can help us spread the word. We need your help today in doing this. We need your help tomorrow. We may need your help for a few years. But what's the bottom line here? Our, safe, our pace setters contributions have already brought in over $45,000. We are well on our way to what remains a very challenging goal of raising $100,000 this year. But we will succeed in doing so. So will this make a difference? A little earlier I asked Peter this question. Kind of comes down to Peter's desk. Will we really make a difference? Will raising this money really translate into housing? The bottom line is that within the next 30 days, Peter will use this money to leverage other resources to house four homeless individuals within 30 days. Within, by the end of the year, by the end of 2014, we don't know what the point in count time is going to say, but we think we have a good, pretty good sense, and based on current estimates, by the end of 2014, we can actually house the homeless individuals in the greater Nashua area. With your help, we can do this. Thank you for coming. Stay for a while for conversation and refreshments. As you leave, we invite you to go by the, the door to your left here. Go buy a photo montage that will show you 30 or more, how many? Housing programs and facilities that hire our homes, how many? 36. 36. He has the uh, gray hairs to probably count every one of those. The Harbor Homes uh, has created along with the incredible staff he's assembled. There'll be some staff out there who can uh, explain a little bit more about what they do. So again, thank you for coming and thank you for your support. Good night. <laughs>